Well, good morning, my beautifully blessed people, and welcome back. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you all once again for joining me here on this channel, as well as in this ministry, to God be the glory. To all of my new subscribers, welcome, beautifully blessed people. It is such a pleasure to have you here to join this family. And to my current subscribers, hello, beautifully blessed people. Welcome back. And once again, thank you guys so much for all of your support that you are doing in this ministry, as well as sharing the messages. And I have a word this morning, and this is a very, very serious message as it relates to God's house. And the message for today is this, vain worship, disrespecting God's house. Again, the message for this morning is vain worship and disrespecting God's house. So before we begin, let's have a brief word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you once again for this opportunity to come to speak into the lives of thy peoples, as well as those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. Lord, I decrease as you increase. Have your will and your way in my life, Lord. I pray for every household that is represented under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you watch over them and, and lead them into the path of righteousness for your name's sake, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you hear their prayer and you hear their cry. Lord, I pray for the power of the Holy Ghost and thy sweet Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Fill this entire atmosphere with your presence and dwell within me and rest within me and encircle me. Holy Spirit, I pray that you visit the homes of those who are watching and those who are the people of God. Have mercy upon each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke Satan. I bind and cancel every evil, wicked spirit, every demon and every devil, every manner of evil. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be sent back to the pit of hell and burned by fire. Holy Lord God of Israel, I pray that you rule over this message and that this message will be a blessing to someone. To you, God, be the glory, praise, and honor, majesty, dominion, and power. In the name of Yeshua Hamashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for you and to you, thou who art the most high. Amen. All right, wonderful people. I have some notes I got to read over. And this message... Um, came to me. I was actually in the process of writing something else. But as always, as the Lord will have it, his spirit will guide us to do what it is that he has assigned for us to do. And so there's been a lot of things that have been going on in God's house that are disrespectful and the Lord is not pleased. And so this is a specific word for those who are under leadership that are allowing things to be disrespectful in the house of God, as well as vain worship. And this message is also for those who are participating in these forms of worship, for they are not pleasing in the eyes of God. Okay. All right. So to worship the Lord is to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Romans chapter 1 verse 12 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This was spoken by the Apostle Paul. To worship the Lord is to sacrifice our bodies, give praise, honor, and thanks unto the Lord. We make ourselves lowly to God. God is to be glorified, so to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Beloved, we see that there is a lot of worldliness and vain worship and dis disrespectfulness in God's house. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There are those who are in leadership who allow vain worship and God's house to be disrespected. And a lot of them participate in these acts themselves. First Peter Chapter 1, verse 14 says, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. All of the theatrics, the special effects, and appropriate attire 
uh, to name a few, is disrespectful to God and also disrespectful to God's house. I'm going to take some water here, guys. <clears throat> Let's continue. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Beloved, many of them have turned God's house into a world stage. And again, God is not pleased. They are filled with lust and sinful desires. They speak heresies, fables, and deception, denying the truth and not teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are man manipulating hearts and minds, presenting themselves as the center of attraction, causing distractions, calling their stories sermons, misleading the flock, and God is not pleased. They say that this is a new way of them bringing followers to Christ, knowing that this is a lie from the pit of hell, and knowing they are driven by their flesh, their greed, and filthy lucre. The Lord never said that the way to the Father was through music nor through singing. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, John 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. This is what Jesus said. So for them to be using platforms, vain worship, and using worldliness to bring people to Christ, that's not the way. The way to the Father is through Jesus. That's the only way. All right. First Peter chapter four, verse two says that he no longer should live the rest of his life in the flesh of the lust of men, but to the will of God. Brothers and sisters, they have conformed to the world, and the Holy Spirit is not with them, nor is the Holy Spirit in them. When we worship God, we are to give ourselves to God. We come into fellowship with God. This is showing God that He reigns in our lives. Nothing else reigns in our lives. We are to use our bodies, use our worship to show God that he is the only one who reigns in our lives. It is a sin to falsely worship God, to worship God in vain and to disrespect God's house. So let me explain what is vain worship? What does that mean? Here's what it means. It is when one is honoring an individual, a person or entity through their own acts and their attitudes while giving reverence to these other than the one true God who is the Most High. In Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 through 9, Jesus says, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Verse 9, But in vain they do worship me, teaching doctrines, the commandments of men. So again, this is not of God. There are some of these things which disrespect God's house. And I'm going to give uh, a few of them because I've listed some of them here. Allowing children to play on the altar, running in the sanctuary, and mocking others. Adults and children walking behind the altar and chancel. People standing at the pulpit which is very, very sacred, airing their dirty laundry, announcing and speaking things they ought not speak, using the pulpit and the sanctuary for things and subjects that have nothing to do with teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They use God's house to exalt themselves, making themselves and others the center of attraction. Some in leadership are disrespecting people and the congregation the community, the personal lives, and in business. They use the pulpit to take part in organizations that are worldly. In the sanctuary, these are some of the other things that are being done that are disrespectful in God's house. They are eating, they are drinking, they are chewing gum. Children and adults are playing videos, video games, talking on their cell phones, and taking selfies. 
other forms of disrespect in God's house include the following, allowing sin, disrespectfulness, distractions, speaking and behaving unrighteously. Here's another thing. When it comes to music, they use God's house as a world stage. Music performed on a world stage is not to be performed in God's house, nor are there to be any acts or worldly character of the world in God's house, for this is not holy in the eyes of God. First Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Psalm 147 verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. In God's house, music is to be music that is pleasing to God. It is not to be music that is worldly. The Lord is who we give our praise to. He is who we are to glorify, not anyone else, not the instruments. Ministers of music, which is another issue. Ministers of music are actually ministers of music who are responsible to give God, to, are, they are actually responsible to God. They are responsible to ensure the musicians and vocalists are honoring God and God alone. No one is to abuse instruments, nor play instruments in a destructive manner as if they are angry or are on a world stage. No vocalist is to scream, yell, squeal, scat, be competitive, for none of this is giving praise to the Lord our God. Both musicians and vocalists are to praise the Lord and not exalt themselves. When it comes to the physical body, our bodies are to be sacrificed unto the Lord, to worship the Lord in his presence, because the Lord is holy. People are quick to say that David danced before the Lord, and they use this actually as an excuse to behave like clowns, feral animals, bringing shame to God's house. And here's what See, this is why you need to read the word of the Lord for yourself. Study the word of God so that you will know the truth, beautiful people. David danced before the Lord, but he did not dance in God's house. He was not in God's holy temple. This can be found in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 14 through 23. God's house is never to be disrespected. Gyrating, dancing in a sexual manner is the lust of the flesh and it allures people. Other despicable things such as rolling and wallowing on the floor, head banking, stomping, stepping, twitching, running around the church, leaping over pews, having no self-control, screaming, hollering, each of these and more disrespecting God's house. God is not pleased. God's house is not a place of the wild, untamed animals, nor is it the circus. It is a place of holiness. It is the house of prayer. When they clap their hands, who are they clapping to and rejoicing to? Are they clapping their hands and proclaiming the God of Israel? No, they're not. These are those who do not worship the Most High. Instead, they worship, give thanks, and praise to their idols. There is no decorum. Leaders are not to allow this, nor are they to participate. Yet some of them actually do. As a representative of Christ, one is to conduct themselves in an orderly manner. <clears throat> Excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. It says, let all things be done decently and in order. They are out of order in God's house. Somebody has to establish order in God's house. And in a lot of these houses, God's houses, it is not being established. established, And God is getting ready to deal with that. Psalm 47 verse 1 says, 
Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. And only to God, not to the vocalists, not to the musicians, nor to the instruments, but only to God are we to shout with the voice of triumph. Christians are to make sure their selection of music is in alignment with God and that it does not lead them to sin. Today, in today's world, these are things that are taking place in God's house that are ungodly and are unrighteousness. Also, there are leaders behaving in this manner. God, again, is not pleased. What did Jesus do when they were disrespectful and doing evil in the house of the Lord? Jesus tore up the temple because of the evil in God's house. Matthew chapter 21 verses 12 through 13 says, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Now, let me give you a notation here. You are to stop selling and buying doves. Again, Jesus went into the temple and he overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seat of them that sold doves. That's in verse 12 of chapter 21 of Matthew, verse 13. It says, and Jesus said, he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the Lord is saying, he's getting ready to put a stop to all of this foolishness and all this nonsense going on in his house. Be it in selling, buying oil and water, having people give money in denominations, standing in line, lying to people, telling them God will bless them for giving money, knowing this is filthy lucre, and teaching wrongly for the sake of money. This is evil in the eyes of God, and it is greed. God is going to bring judgment upon those leaders who do this and allow this, and upon those who participated in it. What is the spirit behind the oil and the water? that they claim to be holy because it is definitely not holy and is definitely not of God. No matter how they twist the lies to be convincing, the selling of oils and selling of water claiming to be holy, selling, yeah, it's not of God. You may have, and not even know it, you may have opened yourself up to a curse and opened yourself up to a spell. God's anointing is not for sale, neither can money influence it. This is found in Acts chapter 18 verses, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 8. That's Acts chapter 8 verses 18 through 24. I'm actually going to read from the Bible. This has to do with God's anointing, not for sale. And when Simon saw that throwing, I'm sorry, when, and when Simon saw that laying through laying on the, let me get my eyes focus here. Okay, let's start again. Once again, this is found in Acts chapter 8, verses 18 through 24. And when Simon saw that through laying on the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. And Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps that the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art the, in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. 
So again, that is found in Acts chapter 8, verses 18 through 24. Again, God's anointing is not for sale. Here's the question. What is the spirit behind the oil and the water that they claim to be holy that you've purchased? What is the spirit attached to the person who gave it to you? This is why you must be very careful not to allow everyone to lay hands on you. If you didn't buy it from the store, from the manufacturer, it is not safe. You need to seek the Lord. All right. Again, the word of God just told you God's anointing is not for sale. So how is it that these people whose spirits you have no idea, you don't even know where that oil came from and they're selling it to you and you're buying it and it is evil and wicked in the eyes of God. So again, you need to be very careful. How many times, here's another thing you need to think about. How many times has a leader placed oil on your head, oil on your hands, your feet, or on your body? How many times have you attended a foot washing only to discover later that a leader was secretly living in sin and was unrepentant? You don't know. Again, you participating in stuff that's going on in the house of God that is not right, that is wrong and evil in the eyes of God. You need to know how these people are coming about and these spirits that are attached to them. He tells you to try the spirits. You have to try them. It's not just when people are speaking or preaching or prophecy. It is with anything that has to do with the Lord as it deals with spirits. You are to test them. You are to try them. All right. Now, if you have been in God's house and any of these things have taken place, it is evil, disrespectful to God and disrespectful to God's house. And if you have been exposed to any of this evil and wickedness, you are to repent to God because to participate in those things or to even be in the midst of those things, it is evil and wicked in the eyes of God. No leader, no elder, nor board members in the house of God is to allow anything or anybody to disrespect God's house. If you are hearing this message, it means that the Lord is giving you an opportunity to go before him and to get right with him. How do you do this? You are to repent. Beloved, we are to obey God. We are to respect God. We are to honor God and respect God's house for he is holy and God's house shall be the house of prayer. I encourage each and every one of you to stay prayerful, to have faith and put your trust in God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. I pray that this message will be a blessing to you. And I pray that you will receive this message and be in agreement with this message in the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful people, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and be a part of this ministry, this wonderful, beautiful family that the Lord has given to us. And we're all in this together. All right. I will keep you all lifted up in prayer. Just know that I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. And on that note, shalom. And until next time, we'll see you. Bye for now.